Hey everyone, so I took delivery of this Tesla Model Y about 10 months ago, getting close to a year. And on the interior, this car has held up extremely well. I mean, it is just as modern and sleek as the day I got it. It's designed in a way that makes it easy to not have a lot of clutter. I did have some things that the service center ended up sorting out for me, but I still have one complaint. And that is after 10 months, this car smells really bad. More specifically, the air conditioning unit smells really bad. It kind of happened suddenly where one day we got into the car and it was just like, whoa, okay, one of us stinks or something is something's wrong. Something is actually wrong. And so I looked online and I found that a lot of other Tesla Model 3 and Model Y owners are having this issue. And they say it's because uh, mildew or just humidity builds up in the air conditioning system. It's designed in a way that doesn't totally flush out the moisture uh, when you stop driving the car. And so when you're done and you park, it'll just let moisture accumulate in the cabin air filter area. So that's already a problem. But then on top of that, I was putting my gym clothes, my climbing shoes in the front. And the front is actually where the car intakes its air to put into the cabin. And so you can imagine that, you know, hot, gross gym shoes uh, getting trapped into that moisture that's already built up into the air conditioning system. It smelled so bad. And ever since we first started noticing it, um, you know, I've tried a whole lot of different things. I've tried air fresheners, I've tried Febreze, but there's still a sour smell in the system. And you know what? Like the actual interior of the car still smells like a new car, but it's just the first few minutes when you run the air conditioning or you get into the car, you can just smell like it's mildew, it's sour, it, it it's kind of unpleasant. And then air recirculates and air conditioning's running. And then after a few minutes, it's perfectly fine. And it smells pretty fresh to be honest, but I'm looking to fix that smell today. So there are two main things that I'm gonna do. One is I'm going to take out and replace the air cabin filters. I have these supposedly HEPA grade air filters that were sent to me by Tamai. Tamay. I'm also gonna be using an AC evaporator coils cleaner. I've heard that Tesla uses this brand Cool It. Uh, I couldn't find it in stock anywhere, so I just ordered a different brand. And I will also link that in the description down below in case you wanna try and do this as well. First step is to go in and remove any floor mats if you do have them. I'm using these all weather floor mats that I reviewed in a previous video, uh, but we will be removing some of the interior paneling, so get ready for that. One thing that I really like about the filter set that I showed you is that it comes with both tools for removing all of the necessary components to get access to those filters. In my Model Y, there are four pins that I pull out using the orange tool, and then I just use my fingers to pry out the panel that contains two things. One is the light fixture, and two is a small speaker. To disconnect the wire from the light, you might need a screwdriver to click up top, but for mine, it kind of just slid out. And then I toyed around with the speaker, but I ended up deciding that I didn't think I needed to fully remove it, and I could just work around it. Up next, I went and just used my fingers to start prying off this sort of side felt panel. The panel comes off pretty quickly and it reveals all of the interior components and now you can locate the air conditioning filter door. You can use either the included bit or if you have a multi-tool laying around, use that to unscrew the screw and then you can just remove the door panel. Older Teslas might have the screw in a different location so just be on the lookout for that. This is also a good time to go and make sure the fans on your HVAC system are set to off because we are removing the air filters and we don't want to get any dirty air circulating within the car. There should be two tabs, one for the top filter and one for the bottom filter, and we're just gonna use that top tab to pull and remove the top filter. Here, now we have access to the bottom filter, which we're gonna slide up into space, and when it's aligned with the input-output slot, you should just be able to pull that out. If you didn't disconnect the speaker like I didn't, just be sure to be careful around that. Uh, you don't wanna tug on it too much, even though you can see that I am tugging on it a little bit. You can take out your old filters and just give them a whiff. And yeah, in mine, the mildew smell was stuck in there. These are the evaporator coils in the unit that are closest to the driver's side. That's what we're gonna be covering with our cleaning fluid. Take your can of AC evaporator coil cleaning fluid, shake it up, and then add the hose attachment to the nozzle. Here we're gonna try to spray the foam and just cover the coils as completely as we can. As you can see in a little bit, I had a very hard time covering all of the coils in my first go at it, and I'll just show you what that looked like, and then I went back and made some adjustments. The next time I did this, I really focused on getting the upper part of the coils, and when I looked back, I had done a much better job at filling the entire space. I also used this tray from the dollar store as a drip pan just to catch any of the fluid that was leaking out of the bottom drip hole. It's really hot in this garage, and I am very sweaty. And that was a difficult position to be in. 
So I was able to really coat those coils uh, with about half the can it feels like, maybe, I don't know, three quarters of the can. Uh, I just put it away because it felt like uh, I was gonna hit some diminishing returns if I kept spraying and spraying and spraying. Um, put that drip pan under and now we wait 20 minutes. So we wait 20 minutes with the system off, let it drip, let it run through, and then we go in, open all the windows, I'll probably open the garage up, and then I'll run the air conditioning for a handful of minutes, and then once it feels like it's all dried up in there, I will put in the new cabin air filters, close everything up, and then we should be good to go. Before running the fans, I did put the door back on just so it was a closed loop system, and I wasn't letting like, the evaporated cleaning fluid just fly into the cabin of my car. I opened up all the doors and eventually the garage as well, and I just let the AC system run for about five minutes. After that, I turned off the AC system, and then I opened the door again to put in the new filters. When installing new cabin air filters, make sure you listen to the manufacturer's guidelines about the direction they should be facing. What is most important though, is that you have the tags still available when you put the filters in. That just means that the pull tag should always be accessible once the filter is installed. And as you can see here, it'll take a little bit to line it up properly, and if you have the speaker still attached, you'll have to go behind that, but eventually they did slot in and I was able to get them pretty secure. Once again, make sure both the top and bottom filters have their pull tabs accessible so when you go and have to do this again eventually, they're not going to be hidden away and you'll have a much easier time. Reattached the door panel, mine sort of slid in up top and then I was able to use my hand just to get that screw in. I did not want to lose that screw because there were a lot of gaps and places for that to fall into. Up next, we're gonna take that inner sort of side panel and we're gonna line up the clips uh, to where they attach. It's pretty easy, you get the general shape of it and then you just sort of press it in. Everything clicked in pretty easily and you can just stop once you press on most parts of the panel and you stop hearing any clicking noises. Up next, we are gonna wanna take that sort of dangling panel that I have, reattach the light, and this one's pretty easy because you know that it'll work once the light is uh, glowing again. This I did find a little bit challenging, but what I tried to do is align it as best I could, and then when I made sure that the holes were pretty lined up, I would take those little pins that we took out earlier, you put the outer skinny casing into the hole first, and then you use the sort of rest of the body to press it in and secure it in place. And the last thing here is just to remember to get your drip pan out and discard of it appropriately. Just let it run. Do you want to test out getting the outside air in, so I have it set to this uh, mode, which does not recirculate the air. So I have been sitting in this car now for about five to 10 minutes. Uh, I've been running the air conditioning, both taking air in from the outside and also recirculating air inside. I have not smelled a whiff of the sour, sort of mildewy feet smell that I had before. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna upload this video within about a week of when I film it and do this project. So. Uh, I'm gonna leave in the comments below if, if and when, because I know that Teslas do have this problem over, you know, the course of a year or two years or so, I will write in the comments below when the smell has come back. Hopefully that smell doesn't come back for a while, but I'll just, I'll write in the comments. Can't really tell how long this is gonna last. The products that I mentioned, I'm gonna list their Amazon links in the description down below. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope that this car keeps smelling fresh because that was the only thing, that was really the only thing uh, that was still bugging me. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again real soon.